Hey everybody, and thank you so much for gathering together as a small group uh, to discuss this uh, week three, session three of His Name Is, and we have finally hit the big one, you know, of all the names that we can talk about that are for God, that we use for God, that we find in the Bible about God. Here's the big one. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And uh, so as I think about Christmas coming up, well, there's an anticipation and an excitement that, that comes along with Christmas season. And I know my wife, Sherry, and I, we stay so busy. There's so much going on. She's a music teacher, so she's doing all kinds of concerts and field trips and going around to different places with her choirs, and they're, they're bringing Christmas songs and presentations. Uh, Sherry even uh, got me my first ever, in all my days, I've never had an advent calendar. Uh, an actual advent calendar and this is the kind and maybe they're all like this where you pop open a little window and there's a little piece of chocolate in there that you get to eat and uh, you just keep counting down those days so there's an anticipation and an excitement that comes with Christmas as I think about the name of Jesus the name Jesus it's in the Greek it's Iesus uh, and it's actually a Greek form a Greek transliteration of the Hebrew word Yeshua a word that literally means he saves. It literally means he rescues. This anticipation for the people of Israel that our rescuer is finally coming to rescue us. But as we know, uh, they might have been anticipating someone to rescue them from the hands of Rome and reestablish a Davidic kingdom, bring back the glory days of when Israel was ruling the world, so to speak. But what Jesus came to do is rescue you and me we all need individually rescuing. It's, a, it's an emotional rescue. It's a spiritual rescue. And yes, even a physical rescue. And that's what's I think, so, so awesome about us learning about this person that was placed in a manger and eventually died on a cross. His name is Jesus. His name literally means rescuer. It literally means Savior. And so uh, as you look at Matthew 1 together and kind of revisit the Christmas story, where an angel uh, comes and appears to Joseph, he tells him to give him the name Jesus. And all through Scripture, I mean, 925 times in the New Testament alone, we see this name Jesus, Jesus, over and over and over again. This literally is the name by which we can be transformed. It literally is the name by which we can experience eternal freedom and salvation. That is the name that that healed the blind, that caused the lame to walk again, that caused demons to run. It is the name that transformed the world. And I tell you, this is so, so powerful. As you're there in a group, I want you to kind of discuss this a little bit. I know in my message that I preached about this, I read Philippians uh, 2, 7 through 11, and, and that's your small group leader is going to read that for you. But it's it's a song or a poem that was actually known in those days that Paul actually puts in his letter to the Philippian church. And that little piece of that song and that, that was written is just powerful in that it reminds us that, that the name of Jesus is the name that is above all names and that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that that name, that Jesus, this person, is Lord of all. And so as you discuss this together as a group, think about this idea of being rescued. Uh, the next step that I propose in my teaching about this is that, you know, when we need rescued, what do we do? We don't just consider the alternatives and just kind of sit around and just wonder how we might be rescued. Man, when, when you're in desperation, you need rescuing, we scream for help, we holler for help. That's the next step that, that I propose that you think about when you think about this name Jesus. If he is our Savior, he's the one that can rescue us and, and grab hold of our lives and pull it away from where we are to where we need to be. Pull us from death to life. Pull us from lost to being found. Then we need to scream out to him. We need to holler out to him for help. So as you think about this, in your group time, maybe discuss in what ways if you've called upon Jesus, in what ways has he specifically rescued you? What has he specifically rescued you from? Talk about that and share that together. And um, and maybe here's another thing. It's not like our lives are perfect from that point on. I mean, we still have this journey 
Uh, we're, we're, we're living in a world where we're continually being pulled perhaps away from God and away from the path that he has for us. So maybe discuss this as a group. In what ways do you still need rescuing? What ways right now do you need rescued? What do you need rescued from? If you had to answer this question right now, what do you need rescued from the most right now? I think that's a powerful question to answer in your group together. And as you begin to close down your discussion time, when we think about the name of Jesus, it really does draw a line in the sand. He is rescuer. He is savior. But to be confronted with that name begs to ask this question. Are you saved? Are you rescued? Have you hollered for help yet? Have you called upon his name? If you've never done that, you could have gone to church your whole life or you may be kind of new to church. But if you've never had that moment in your life where you've called upon the name of Jesus and asked him to forgive you of your sins and asked him to save you, if you've never experienced that, then the Bible teaches very clearly that you are still lost, that you still need a savior. So call upon him right now and your small group leader will will lead you in a prayer time that will give you that opportunity to call upon the name of the Lord and to be saved. And I'm here to tell you that if you do that today, man, tell someone, tell your group, tell your group leader, uh, that's, that's not anything to be embarrassed or ashamed of. That is such a powerful thing. You're about to experience your first true Christmas celebration because you have actually opened the gift that Jesus came to give you and all who would believe this free gift of eternal life, this rescued, redeemed, saved life. That's what he came. That's what he was born to give. And I hope that if you haven't, that today will be the day that you receive that. Thanks for uh, for listening to this video, watching this video. Enjoy some great discussion. And if you haven't already hollered for help, to the one who is our rescuer, Jesus himself. Holler for help today. God bless you.